issues of life TV. continuing on in the series of gratitude so gratitude and if you have not yet subscribed or you have not watched our previous video check it out it will bless you thank you and subscribe okay so this time around we're gonna be talking about gratitude and anxiety gratitude and anxiety looking at how gratitude can help us to manage anxiety to be able to overcome anxiety the benefits of gratitude so what is anxiety I'm sure most of us have probably had this feeling of a little bit of anxiety when we are trying to do our examinations or the fear of unknown, the fear of uncertainty. We don't know how it's going to come out and we feel this unease, you know, the feeling of unease, worry, fear, they all go together and it brings about the whole picture of anxiety. So how can gratitude help us to manage our anxiety how can gratitude help us to overcome it even so gratitude allow us to leave our worries with God and not take them back because when we are thankful for what God has done for us then we, are, we have this assurance that God is in control that whatever it is that is making us to feel on his will you know God will help us through it for instance let's say for a student that you are so anxious about oh you have a board exam that is coming up and you don't know how it's gonna go and you're constantly worrying worrying about it. But when you look back and say, okay, God helped me in my first year of, of, of my exam. I was able to do well on it. You know, God helped me on, in my second year. Surely this final year exam, I'm going to be okay. So, you know, when you're thankful for what God has done in the past, it helps you to remember God's faithfulness and it puts that anxiety and worry aside. So, and when we are grateful, when we are grateful and when we are thankful, which is like, you know, gratitude, it allows us to see God and less of our situation. You know, when we look for, when we stay focused on the problem, you know, it makes the problem look bigger than it's supposed to be. You know, just like the story of the Israelites, you know, when they went to spy on the land, they saw themselves as grasshopper, except Caleb and Joshua. And then they, they saw the, 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 the opposer, you know, as the giants. But when Joshua and Caleb, they look at God, they focus on the God that has sent them, the God that has helped them in the past. They were able to know that, you know what, God is able to help us to overcome and to conquer this land. So the same way, when we, when we focus our attention on God by thanking him for what he has done in the past, by praising him and appreciating who he is, then it will help us to see less of that trouble and see God, the almighty, all-powerful God. And this will take away every form of anxiety you know gratitude also allows us to yield to god it makes us to surrender all to him it makes us to be submissive to submit to the sovereignty of god knowing that god is all knowing all powerful and there is nothing that comes to him by surprise so when we when we thank god and we appreciate who he is and and we are grateful for what he has done in the past and how he has set us up so many ways in ways that we couldn't even understand the miracles that he has done in the past how things has just fallen into place things that we were not even expecting but god came true for us it will help us to submit that source of anxiety to god and say okay god i trust you for you are too faithful to fail me i've trusted you before and you have never failed so i'm going to trust you again concerning this situation so that is what gratitude helps us and it, it reassures us that god is good you know jeremiah 29 verse 11 says for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plan to prosper you and not to harm you plan to give you hope and a future so when we are grateful to god when we look at god the almighty god and appreciate him for all that he has done for our all he has done in our lives we'll be able to see that okay god is good and his plan for us is good so whatever it is that is making me to feel anxious, it's really not of God. You know, the Bible says in the book of Timothy that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But when we are so fixated on that circumstances, it makes us to be fearful. But when we look at who God is and say, okay, God, you have not given me the spirit of fear. So I have sound mind, I have power and I have love. Amen. So gratitude allows us to see 
that God is sovereign. I've, I've mentioned that already. And we can look at the scripture in Psalm 139, 4 to 5. Psalm 139, 4 to 5. It says, before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You have me in behind before and you lay your hand upon me. It is important that we realize that God is the one that knows the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Omega. And that is what gratitude helps us to see. It really just opens our eyes to see, wow, you know, God has been good. So why do I need to worry? Why do I need to be anxious? Gratitude allows us to feel God's presence. You know, like last week we talked about in God's presence, there's fullness of joy. And that is what the Bible says. And it talks about, you know, God inhabit the praises of his people. And gratitude is praising God, appreciating God, and acknowledging him. So for, for if God inhabit the praise of the people, and in his presence there's fullness of joy, we enter into God's presence with thanksgiving. So gratitude helps us to be conscious of God's presence. So fear, worry, or, or any form of anxiety has to leave. But wherever God is, there is joy. And this is also confirmed to us in Isaiah 41 verse 10. He says, do not fear, for I am with you. Why? Because God is with us. So when we are grateful and we acknowledge God's presence, we will know that fear has no place to stay. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's Isaiah 41 verse 10. So we can see that when we're grateful to God, when we appreciate God, it helps our eyes to see that he is with us. There is that, you know, tap in the back saying, don't worry, I got this. So gratitude allows us to make our requests known to God without complaining or murmuring, but with thanksgiving. Because when we are anxious, we are like, you know, bombarding God, give me this, give me that, even complaining in our request, you know, comparing ourselves with others. You know, those things does not move God. But what really moves God is praise and gratitude. So when we act, when we, when we act in gratitude, with an attitude of gratitude, it allows us to, to make our request in a way that will be pleasing unto God with thanksgiving. You know, it allows us not to be to play tantrums or ask and miss or with wrong motive or of our own pleasure, but with an appreciative heart and a right attitude so gratitude allow us to act the right way and i want to share you know a scenario imagine a child just coming to you and just say oh mom i want this i want that thank you thank you me this can you imagine one of my classmates had this and i don't have that mom can you just give me this what, what is the big deal you know just complaining in such a, a manner and with so much anxiety and so much and so much fear or imagine if your another child comes to you and say you know what mom i thank you for what you have done for me in the past how you helped me you know to prepare for my exam how you did this and how you did that and now you know thank you for this toy that you have for me and you know what mom i really like this other toy if you if you if you would like to give it to me you know in a way that is more calmer it's more like you know appreciative it's more like you know praising the mom you know the mom will be you know as human the mom will be there, okay, yeah, sure, my daughter. As soon as I get the money, I will get it for you. It's the same thing with God. That's what the Bible says. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Not with anxiety, not with complaining, not with fear. Because when we are fearful, that means we don't have faith. And we cannot be fearful. If we are saying that we are fearful, that means we do not believe in the God that we serve. That means we are thinking that God is, is not God enough to be able to help us in that situation. So we, just, we don't go with faith. Just imagine a child that is being bullied. You know, and the father, and, and then the child saw that the father is right there. You, I'm sure the, 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 the child will have a little bit of courage because he knows that the father is right there. And that's the same thing with us for every child of God that have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. God is with you. Your father is always watching over you. So even when you feel overwhelmed, feel tormented, feel, feel, feeling fearful, always remember, I am not alone. I have God with me. So that is what gratitude does. It helps us to change our perspective and realize that God is with us and realize that, you know what? All that we need is already provided and we do not need to ask out of fear. We don't need to pray out of fear because when we are praying out of fear, we are bringing as so that issue is bigger than God. So, and this is very, you know, this is what the word of God says concerning this. In Philippians 4 verse 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. You see, with thanksgiving, not with murmuring, not with complaining, but with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then what would not happen after that? What will happen after that? Verse 7 and 8 tells us that, And the peace of God 
which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when we make our request known with, with thanksgiving, you know, with thanksgiving, we experience God's peace because we leave the burden at his feet there. We don't carry it back. We, we, we trust God absolutely, knowing that God is in control. So that is what gratitude does. It gives us peace. When we are grateful for what God has done and we are appreciative of who God is, it gives us peace. And it's important to know that it is impossible to be thankful and be worried and anxious at the same time. It's really, I don't see how that works because your mind can only occupy one thing at a time. So if you are thankful, worries cannot be there. If you are if you are anxious, then you cannot be thankful. So when we are when we choose to be thankful at all times, we, we, we are more optimistic. We are we are, we are more we look, we look we see things from a different perspective. We see hope. We see, we see God making a way in that situation. We see things just working together for our good. We see the word of God coming to life in our in our life. You know, that Romans eight twenty eight says, for, for, you know, "For all things works together for the good of them that love God and are called according to His purpose." That is a that is an assurance that I have as a child of God. And if you are listening to me and you are a child of God, you believe in Jesus, you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you love God, then that scripture romans 8 28 also applies to you and because of that it gives us that peace it gives us that assurance so when we are grateful for god we're able to see the word of god coming to pass in our life we'll be able to receive strength from god's word we receive comfort from from god's word you see john 3 16 a very common verse it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only, his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Have eternal life. So we, we are able to see that, you know, we are able to see, okay, God loves me. And if he loves me, he gave his only begotten son. How much more? What else is it that he cannot give to me? What else is it that he cannot give to me? And Romans 5 verse 8 says, For God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, it wasn't because we earned it. It wasn't because we worked for it. It was because of his love. Just plain love. You know, love that cannot be found anywhere else, but only in Christ. Because no one else would want to die for you. No one else would want to be good to you for being bad. You see, even human beings, they don't like bad people. They can't show you love <laughs> if you're bad. They are more good to the good, you know. So, But God is so full of love. He is love himself. He loved us while we we're still sinners. And this is one of my favorite scriptures when I'm feeling so like overwhelmed or I'm, 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 I'm just feeling so overwhelmed. I look at the scripture and this is Romans 8 and I'm going to read from 31 to 39. It's a lot of scriptures, but I'm sure it will bless you. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Just look at that. You know, just, just look at that. If God is for you. Who can be against you? Nothing. No circumstances. Not even COVID. Not the pandemic. Not the situation around you. Can be a, as long as God is for you. And then verse 32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? You see, this part, I just noticed this part. Along with him, along with Christ. That, you know, when we have Christ, we have everything. We can't have the things and leave Christ behind. <laughs> that, is, that, is of no, that is not from God. We have to have Christ. Christ has to be in the picture because it is in true Christ we can receive all things. You know, so because the devil can also bring things to you. But if anything that is outside of God, it will bring about fear. It will bring about sorrow. It will bring about anxiety. But the gift of God is the one that does not bring about any sorrow. So here is reassuring us children of God that he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? So whenever you're feeling anxious and you're like, oh God, just give me this, just give me that, I just want it. I, you know, whatever it is that is making you so fearful, just think about it. Wait a minute. I wasn't even there when God decided to give his own only begotten son. He did it even while I was yet sinner. He did it even before, you know, before the foundation of the world. He, he already saw because he's the all-knowing God. So what is it that I, I am anxious about that my God is not able to help me with? And then verse 33, who would bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. 
I don't know about you, but when I read the word of God, it ministers to me and it gives me comfort. So that is what it helps us. It gives us comfort. And this can only be seen through gratitude. Because when we are complaining or murmuring, we cannot even seek the word of God. We don't even we won't be able to even want to study the word of God. But gratitude helps us. It opens our eyes to see the, the, the goodies and the treasures that are in the word of God. Then verse 30, 34. So the 33 I just read says that God is the one that justifies. Who is it that can charge against whom God has chosen? Like nobody like the almighty all creator the one that created the whole thing that can do anything just by the split of a second or even less than that who is it that is going to want to charge against you as long as you are a child of god who will bring any charge against you and then verse 34 who then is the one who condemns no one no one condemns no one christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Hallelujah. How awesome is that? It gives me so much joy to know that my God, Jesus, my Lord and Savior, is there constantly interceding for me. There is no condemnation. I have nothing to fear because Jesus is interceding for me. And then verse 25, it says, Who shall separate us? From the love of Christ. You know, the Bible says the love of God, you know, perfect love cast away all fears, cast away anxiety, cast away worry. So we need to really learn this love that God has given unto us. He is a loving Father. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or dangers or sword? This is applicable both sides. What is it that will separate you from loving God? Is it the circumstances or situation around you that is making you to be complaining and blindfolding you to see God's faithfulness and making you to be anxious for nothing? And the same thing, no circumstances around you should make you feel as if God has left you because God is with you. Even in that water, even in that situation that seems so overwhelming, that fearful situation around you, remember as a child of God that God is with you. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. And as it is written in then 36, it says, as it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. You see, that is what it was done for us. Verse 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conqerors. Through him who loved us. Through Christ that loved us, we are more than conqerors. God has given us victory over anxiety. He has given us victory over fear or worry. Oh, gratitude helps us to realize that we cannot even fix the situation anyway. I might as well just thank God for it. Because it does not, my worry does not change anything. It just gives me heavy heart. It makes me look older. It gives me high blood pressure. It does not do anything. So what are we worrying about and like i mentioned before when we worry when we are anxious when we are fearful is that we are limiting god we are saying that god you cannot do it let me do it myself and really can we can we can we of course not so we need god and all we need to do is just thank him thank him for who he is thank him for what he has done and thank him for what he is able to do and then that anxiety will pack its load and leave that fear will pack its load and leave you know um psalm 23 verse 1 says the lord is my shepherd i lack nothing so are you anxious about food are you anxious about you know about what you need as long as jesus is your shepherd you will lack nothing it might sound like oh is food gonna come far down from heaven god is able to make a way where there seems to be no way he is still the same god he is still the same god it makes away the wilderness. He can do it anyhow, anyway. You just trust him. You do, it's not your way to figure it out. You know, we have to learn not to try to figure out God. God is God. That's why he's God. No one can figure him out. He does things the way he wants it. You cannot put God in a box. Yes. So, and David has a testimony of how God helped him out of his own anxiety. He says in Psalm 94, he says, When I said my foot is sleeping, your unfailing love, Lord, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Your consolation brought me joy. So there is so many testimonies of how God is able to bring us out of anxiety. All we need to do is to focus on God and focus on his mightiness and just thank him and praise him. 
have an attitude of gratitude. You know, gratitude is the healthiest of all human emotions. And it has been, you know, it, it is what it is that gratitude helps our mental health. It helps us. It helps. It helps. It does really help. So all we need to do is to do it and actually give thanks. Get a journal of thankfulness. Write it down. Actually make it a daily lifestyle to just thank God. And you will see how your life will be transformed. So if you are listening to me and you have not yet given your life to Jesus, you would have noticed that everything I've been mentioning, it has, you know, the principle, the condition of being a child of God. Because that is where our hope comes from. That is the principle, you know. Yes, for God so loved the whole world and he gave his only begotten son. But there is a thing there. For whosoever believe, do you believe? Yes, God loves the old world. He gave his only son to the old world. But there is a condition. You need to believe. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe in his son, Jesus? Do you believe in what he has done? Do you believe that there is Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus came and died on the cross for your sin? Oh, that is all you need. Just to believe in that act that was done for you and I. And you'll be able to experience that internal life, that peace, even in the midst of the storm, that peace, that, that assurance and confidence, knowing that God is in control of your life now. So it is no longer you, but it is now God that is in control. So for you to be able to partake in this great, great, great things, great blessing, great benefits, there is no one to describe it. The great peace that money cannot buy or nobody else can give you. Just say this after me. By saying, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. You died on the cross for my sins. Forgive me for all my sins, for I know that I am a sinner. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Please write my name in the book of life, and I want to know you more, and I want to be closer to you. Rule and reign in my life. I believe in you, and I trust you for my life. In Jesus' wonderful name, I have prayed. Amen. I believe, I believe by that confession, by that prayer, that you are now born again. For that is what the word of God says. So find yourself a Bible believing church and begin to study the word of God and just you know fellowship with all the believers like you. God bless you. Have a wonderful today. Time. God bless you. So don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. God bless you. Until next time.